One way to think about traditional marketing is that there are already predetermined groups of people and I'm going to research these groups of people, then I'm gonna build a product that targets one of these groups of people and then I'm gonna specifically communicate to one of these groups of people. Whereas I think in the creator economy or creator marketing is I'm gonna follow a passion that I have and people are going to be attracted to me. Again, not in an ego way, but they're gonna recognize themselves or, or the passions that you're interested in. It could be filmmaking, it could be marketing information, it could be pottery, it could be making mugs. It's a totally different fundamental way to look at the market. I think traditional people see eyeballs or people viewing your promotion as expensive. So it's the Super Bowl commercials or not even Super Bowl commercials, regular commercials, it's all of those things. Whereas creators, eyeballs and attention is actually fairly cheap for you. So you can make a TikTok and upload it and you're in front of a million people or whatever it might be. The interesting thing is where these two things overlap. So that's when you start to see things like brand deals. You can have a bad brand deal where the creator is just reading a script that the traditional business wanted them to say, or there's good brand deals. SeatGeek and David Dobrik are a good example of that, where if you see a SeatGeek ad in that, you know it's gonna be a really fun experience for the user. Then there's things like co-brands that a lot of traditional companies are doing with creators. Peter McKinnon and his uh, Nomadic Backpack are a good example of that. Then there's white labeling, where the traditional industry is like, hey, we got all the systems and infrastructure in place we just need you to slap your name on this and it should be good to go. A lot of makeup companies are doing this with creators, probably the Kendall Jenner, one of the Jenners or Kardashians or whatever are doing those. So that's that's how these things are kind of overlapping now. So the traditional marketing world sees the creator marketing world as just promotion. And the creators should start to see these traditional businesses as infrastructure. And there could be some really cool overlap between the traditional marketing and the creator marketing worlds. But I think there's other people like Mr. Beast who are actually killing the game. And they look at traditional marketing and say, you know what, I don't need your infrastructure. I'm actually big enough to be able to have my own infrastructure. And that's where you get things like Mr. Beast Burger. So it was him and his his team that reached out to all these restaurants and built the app. So I think the creator economy is getting so big where it's actually becoming bigger than the traditional side of things as well. So on the other side, if you're running more of a traditional business, maybe like a cupcake business or something like that, think of yourself as a creator. So bring people behind the scenes, what it takes to make a cupcake and what's your favorite cupcake and why your cupcakes are better than others or what raw materials you're using. All of those fun things people will be interested in and it might not seem like it's good, but actually people do want to see a lot of those things. A word of advice to the creators out there. I think a lot of creators aren't seeing themselves as businesses. They're just seeing themselves at best as promotion for the, these traditional businesses. But I would encourage you to start thinking to yourself of what products can I make? How could I be like Mr. Beast in my particular area? And so I think that creators are often not considering themselves as good marketers to the detriment of themselves and maybe the longevity of making it full time in this creator world and also to the detriment of their audience if you organically bring a product to your audience that you're excited about and you know that they would be excited about and because you know the ingredients you know everything that's going in on it and they kind of represent your brand well that can be a very lucrative thing now there are bad ways to do this like you don't just want to start slapping your name on everything and then you have bad quality stuff and then that ruins your brand name but hopefully you understand the principle that maybe you need to start thinking through this business framework the best diagram that i've found for what marketing is your customer is in the center you build it segmenting, targeting, positioning, and differentiating around that. Then we build out a marketing mix. So what's your product for these people? How are you gonna price it to make sure that they are willing to pay that? What's your place? So how are you gonna get it to the places that either your customer's at or how are you gonna get your customers to the place that your thing is at? And how are you gonna communicate it ultimately to your customer? And then even around that, you'll want to control these efforts. You're gonna wanna make sure that the metrics that you're using to determine success are hitting those things and not just promotion things, but also distribution metrics, like are your deliveries being on time, have market research and analyze things, and you're gonna to wanna to implement, and you're gonna to wanna to plan for this, all of those fun things, but you're also gonna look even outside yourself, what are your competitors doing? What is the government doing? Is the government saying, hey, there's now a new tax on this? Maybe your suppliers are like, hey, there's not enough cranberries for your smoothie company, so the price is going up, and then that then affects your price. And then you're also like, well, maybe I can just sell my product to a marketing intermediary, and then it's their problem to them promote it. But but then how are you differentiating yourself and the marketing intermediary doesn't care if they sell your product or their competitor's product. It's 
Marketing can be a lot of different things, I think is what I'm saying. A lot of people think that marketing is just promotion. Promotion is just one small piece of the puzzle. So marketing is figuring out all of those things. I think that's probably the best way that that I can put it. So that I would say that that's like traditional marketing. And I think the only difference between traditional marketing and creator economy or creator marketing, creator voice crack, uh, whatever you want to call it, is what's in the center. And I think creators need to put themselves in the center and not out of an egotistical, I'm the center of the universe kind of way. No, no, no. It's more like a, because discovery is so easy right now through YouTube, TikTok, social media, all of those things. If I put myself in the center and double down on passions that I enjoy, I'm going to trust that the algorithm or TikTok or YouTube or whatever is going to start pushing me out to people who have similar interests. So with this framework, what I want to do over the next several weeks or months or whatever it turns into is zoom into each one of these areas in this framework, because there's actually more frameworks underneath each of these frameworks, it's kind of like a Russian doll situation going on with this framework. So there are more product frameworks to help you wrap your head around what products might look like or how you can price in a way that feels authentic or what are some distribution strategies or promotion strategies, all of those different things, there are actually more and more frameworks as you dig into them. And the first one that we're going to zoom into is actually customer value and relationships. So that'll be my next video. So if you like this breakdown of what this traditional marketing is and what this creator economy marketing is, uh, yeah, like and subscribe and all that. And we're going to touch on customer value and relationship and it should be a great time. Just a great time. Peace. I also want to add too that if you've been following me for the past little bit or whatever, I've made mention of wanting to put my university lectures on and I've recorded two and they're just so boring that I've decided to keep a more conversational, more YouTube style, might be the same content, but just, just in a cooler way with my hat backwards, you know? So that's kind of what's going on with that. If, it, if anyone was curious, probably weren't, but I thought I'd share it.